श्रीमते रामानुजाय नम समोत्सव समय सर्वे अत्रह पिश्रम तप्ता अस्मिन् सम्मेलन ये सन्नद आसन सर्वे अधुना तो पिश्रम तप्ता मुमुक्षव सी मुमुक्षव मुमुक्षव सी तादृशा विस्तार प्रसंगाक अतीव लाभाय न भवेती अस्माक दृढ़तमो अभिप्राय न तो भवता विषय कर्मकर्तृण विषय अहम वादन अस्म यद्यपि सर्वे भवादृशा विषय तत्र वर्तते वर्धते चृहचिंतापरा स्वबंधून मित्रण दर्शन काम दर्शित काम ये विरसत सी तादृशा विषय एवं न उपपद्य है यद्यपि अस्मिन् व्यासपीठे उपविश्य किंचि मंगलाशासना त्र वितरण कुरु तैः प्रार्थित तदनुसृत्य किंचि उपा विरमा टुडे वी हर टेकन दि सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रिब्यूशन ऑफ महाराष्ट्र टू सांस्कृत लिटरेचर सो दिस डील्स विद दि एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ फोर मेजर कॉन्सेप्ट वन इज द सांस्क्रीट एज अ लैंग्वेज and second is the explanation for the different levels of literature and third what do you mean by contribution and fourth specifically studying about the frontiers of maharashtra and its application i think that more than 90 papers are exactly 90 papers have been submitted by various conversant various authorities those who have uh, fathomed into unfathomable regions and brought out the equivalent essential essence of the message of their explorations through various papers in spite of which whatever i am going to tell that will be a total compendium or a compilation of the essence of what they have derived we cannot say that we are going to say something new which nobody has ever touched or thought of whatever that has been dealt it is not a simhavaloka nyaya in which what all the various things that we have decided discussed debated designed and directed in this previous sessions with the various dimensional approach towards the various facets of literary study consignity and contributive analysis that we are going to give a proper form and shape for practical implementation instantaneously and efficaciously that will take just few minutes for us to summarize and put everything into order first let us start with literature literature it deals with the phraseology you know that everything comes from sound there is an evolution for literature the acoustics phonoacoustics phonetics philology then etymology lexicography syntax studies semantics all of these various sciences they evolve in their gradual sensation which results in the fructification of the form of literature literature is the culminated form of the beauty of order the beauty of perfection the beauty of enhancement of words with their not only beauty of sound but also beauty of their organized system with perfect meanings and precision in conveying the message this is known as literature literature is the most saturated but totally it is nitya atrupta whatever we do in literature in analysis it is never ending never can be a person or even the god could be proficient by attaining a particular demarcative status or finite status of literature it is a never ending process ever growing perpetual process but it reaches a particular area in each and everybody's attempt for example in ramayana raghuvamsa it reached a particular attempt of kadidasa and whenever the people they used to applaud it that literary consignity then uttar ramacharitra mahavira charitra then ramacharita manas whenever each and every person approaches at a dimension it proves that uh, Pochistam jagat sarvam. Like that, uh, when you see a literature, you just conclude that everything has been dealt by the person. All dimensions are covered. When you see a different literature, then only you realize, oh, these places have been hidden. These dimensions have been very peripherally dealt. These dimensions have been differently approached, and there is a new dimension for us. So navo navo bhavati jaya mana. So there is no end for this cognitive, intellectual, literary gymnastics and consignity by which we are. Evidently, in the journey of pursuit of literary beauty, literary melifluity, and literary perpetual benefit of the fluidity of literature for practice in dharmas, in acharanas, in knowing about the lauki ka, uh, naithi ka shiksha, what we call the ethical paraphernalia of the society. So, either to pave the way for an ethical society, 
or for a recreative society or for an enlightened society, the literature, it goes on with the journey. And no doubt, now in a dimension, if you see, it proves that the ancestors were very glorious and we are no glorious and we are no more uh, in comparison or competition with their compatibility in literary contribution. At one more side, we are seeing number of people. For example, the literatures that have been contributed by personalities before five centuries, they were just one tenth of the new analytical studies that are being done for the past two centuries. So, by a capable study, we are realizing one way you are seeing the perishability of literary approach especially to the language of Sanskrit which has become obsolete in vocabulary, in vocal dealings and transactions. And one side we are seeing lot of literary developments, lot of analytical studies and lot of research oriented methodologies are brought in Sanskrit not only in the India but also in the western countries and universities. So literature is a perfect system of terminology, phraseology and phonetics on the acoustic consignity which is never ending. So literature is the consummative saturation or it is a consummative profile of the signs of words and phrases with a package of determination, demarcation which is known as niyama which is regulated by stipulations. Stipulations on the basis of the letters, the numbers and the nature and background of the letters. It is known as stipulation. Unstipulated turbulent language is gadya and that type of turbulence which is demarcated within the framework of stipulation is known as padya that which is a medley of both is known as champu so that which is stipulated that which is torrential that which is ambivalent are the three types of literatures then coming to sanskrit already literature i have already told that it must be perfect and precise already that what we call nigama kalpataror galitam phalam sukamuka dambrata drava samyutam already fruit will be sweet Already fruit is sweet. If the same fruit falls from the Kalpavriksha, the all-giving elixir tree, then the fruit will be sweeter. Already fruit is sweet. If the same fruit comes from the tree of Kalpavriksha, it will be sweeter. If the same fruit is tasted by a sukha, by a parrot, it will be the sweetest. So if the same sukha is not just a parrot, but the sukha who is the Vyasaputra, it will be sweeter than the sweetest. Pibata Bhagavata Rasamalayam Muhuraho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. Already literature is sweet. And already Sanskrit is sweet. If the Sanskrit sweetness mixes with the literary consignity, that is Sakkara Milita, that is what Parashara Bhattarya in his Rangarajastava, he applauds the greatness of Narasimha. When God took the form of anthropic status and morphic status, he took all forms, Ajayamano Bhavudha Vijayate. He assumes all forms. When God, he took the form of Nara, it was very enjoyable. He took the forms of animals like Sukara, Matsya and Hamsa, it was enjoyable. When he took an anthropomorphic form of Nara and Simha, it was as enjoyable as milk with sugar. Sharkara, Militam, Dukdhaviva, so says Parashara Bhatta. Likewise, literature. Literature is the invention of the pure mind. Literature is the invention of a wide, broad and deep mind. Literature is the output of a person who can communicate with nature, those who can speak with the trees, those who can understand the instincts of non-living beings even, those who can talk with a rock, talk with the mountain, communicate with the clouds, see each and everything as a parcel of sentience, as a parcel of divinity and eternity. Such a person could bring the literary beauty. Already it is there in Greek literature, Sumerian literature, Babylonian literature, Chinese literature, the great French literature, German literature, all the anti-diluvian, post-diluvian, modern, ultra-modern, millennial, classical, pre-classical, post-classical, all of these era, they consist of innumerable literatures. But already there is a sweetness. If it is mixed with the language of the gods, the language of divinity, the language which is nothing but the structure of the eternal Vedas, which are the root cause of the creation, which is the essential source for the sustainability through the celestial and human intervention which is the source for sustenance of each and every person's morale, caliber, acumen, sharpness, perspicacity, finance, austerity, patriotism and all the other valuable instincts of human life. So, already literature is sweet. It has been more sweetened. And there is a problem of more sweetness. There are two problems. If it is more sweet, it will have two problems. You cannot consume more because you will get a saturation limit of diminishing nature. You cannot get it. Number two, consuming something more. Ati Sarvatra Vajayet. 
consuming something more is pernicious to you but it has got such a divine coupling with the sweetness of nature and sweetness of literary consanity that the more you consume the more you will be enlightened and there is no saturation limit number two it is not pernicious the more you take it is salubrious to your physique salubrious to your mind to your intellect and it makes your body vibrant it makes your soul totally potential it makes your intellect sharp it makes your mind to be free from the capricious movements of sojourning between senses and it gives you a grip to your mind to be very comfortable with the universe and handle anything in the world. Like this, let us start with Sanskrit literature. Sanskrit consists of three literatures. One is Apaurushaya literature. Second is Apta Paurushaya literature. And third is Paurushaya literature. The Apaurushaya literature deals with the Vedic literature. Even though the Vedas are different in status, the grammar, their concordance is different. It starts with the Vedas. So, contribution of Maharashtra to Vedic literature, Vedic Sanskrit literature, contribution of Maharashtra to the secondary literature, that is the Dharma Shastra, Itihasa Puranas, Agamas and other things. And contribution to Sahityas, Kavya, Vyakarana, Mimamsa, Tarka Vedanta and other things which are the substantial sublims of the literature. So, primary, secondary, tertiary literatures are Ayika, Amushpika literatures. These are all the classification of the literatures. Next, we can deal with uh, what do you mean by contribution? What do you mean by contribution? Contributions are of hundreds of types. Number one, if somebody imbibes, for example, what is the contribution of Maharashtra? You know that the first contribution in the Shatapata Brahmana, there is a Rishi known as Vidharpa Kaudhinya. He has made Akshatkara. And by his transcendental vision, he has identified a mantra that is the first contribution of Maharashtra to Sanskrit literature. <laughs> and in Aitreya Brahmana, there is the Vaidarbha family. That is the Vaidarbha family. So Maharashtra is nothing but when, see, it is known as amalgamation. Amalgamation. At the time of British rule, we have been discussing with Gadgil. At the time of British rule, some provinces, they were begin. Big provinces will become small towns in the road or in the course of erosion of the crucial timings of the era, that which is washed away by the periodicity. We can see larger things becoming smaller and infinitesimal things will become glorified and magnified over a period of time. It is a rule of nature. Likewise, Vidarbha, the so-called the other portions, they have been trivial, but the Vidarbha that was very dominant both in the spiritual as well as the material status during the Vedic and post-Vedic period and whatever the benefits that are coming to the, the great Vidarbha Desha as an extrolation by the Vedic and post-Vedic scriptures that is attributed only to Maharashtra. <laughs> and the second thing is Aitraya Brahmana I have clearly told. And uh, the Chanda and Vararuchi, the primordial primogenitors of the Prakrita school of thought or Prakrita school of grammar Consider this Maharashtri Prakrit as one of the finest attuned Prakrit in the world. When a language descends, it takes a lot of avatars. Just as God has become a shepherd, God has become a shepherd, cowherd, God has become a lion, God has become a sukra. So it is while descending, God assumes very forms. Likewise, like the Pramaya descends himself with many forms, the Pramana Veda, it is also descending itself in form. Pramana Tattva descends, the Pramana Bhasha also, it descends, it has Avatara. So not only Pramaya Avatarana, Pramana Avatarana is there. Pramana Avatarana is there of two types. One is Pramana Vishaya Avatarana, Pramana Bhasha Avatarana. Bhasha Avatarana resulted in Prakrita, Apabhamsa, Bali and Upasthiti. Even in Maharashtra, Aap Hamko Anugraha Kijiye, if you tell it in Hindi, Anugraha to, Yeto Samskrit ka shabd hai. And Aap, so we are fixing the vital words within the grammatical framework of some other language. It is known as Upasthiti. So the Bhasha's incarnation is in the form of Upasthiti, Apabhramsa, Pali and Prakrita and the first descendant, like Rama is the first son of Dasrata, the first daughter of Samskriti is Prakriti and that Prakriti is Maharashtri Prakriti. That is the greatness. That is contribution of Maharashtra. You see, Gujarat also people contributed. Can you find a Gurjara Rishi? A lot of people from Rajasthan, they would have contributed. In Tamil Nadu also, a lot of people, they contributed. 
but they can can they uh, systematically quote one type of prakriti or descendant language which is the first son or the first uh, prodigal daughter we cannot produce that that is the greatness and moreover laukika vaidikeshu and in that vritti which is quoted by patanjala in his mahabhashya he quotes vaidika laukikeshu and uh, here the vrittikara he is attributed to this maharashtra desha dakshinatya at that time the dakshinatya the portion was very much affixed with maharashtra so the vartika kara that is the vrittikara who was shown in the vritti well exemplification of the vritti vaidika laukikeshu he finds out he is the dakshinatya and dakshinatya at that time is associated with maharashtra so that proves that there was a contribution in the vritti sampradaya also vaidika sampradaya and also prakriti bhasha sampradaya and also in vritti sampradaya there is a possibility for that also likewise there are lot of contributions and jaina contributions you know that there was uttara purana maha purana a lot of other puranas in jaina architecture of linguistic assembly it comes lot of things and even professor alchekar he recommended that the great kavi rajashekara also the king has a kavi raja and raja who is author of the kavya mimamsa and he is attributed to maharashtra says that he says that he is maharashtra bhushana taking some manuscripts from the varanaras library in his detailed preface he quoted that he is a maharashtra bhushana the jewel of maharashtra so likewise lot of other people contribution is of three types persons who are born in maharashtra those who lived in maharashtra and contributed number 2 persons who belong to maharashtra either the ancient or medieval or modern maharashtra those who are migrants settled somewhere else and contributed to maharashtra number 3 those who are from other places migrated to maharashtra settled here and contributed that must be separately discussed in a session and this contribution contribution is first contribution the best contribution is sakshatkara any person will be doing the best of the contribution when they realize a mantra number 1 and commentary to vedas number 2 number 3 commentary to rituals and anushthana that is also a contribution to sanskrit literature and also how to protect the shastras and vedas protection means not sealing inside a wardrobe and locking the room and keeping the key in a place it is not protection that is misappropriation protection of a thing is to protect its surface its peripheral structure from being attacked by three major things one is apashabda and patabheta and second is prakshipta and third thing is ukshepa so it must be free from confusions or ambiguities in resentions it must be free from interpolations and omissions it must be free from any type of relations uh, so totally indubitable standard must be maintained by governance that is the primary protection for a treatise and number 2 protection of a treatise is by vyakhya by writing bhashya vritti vyakhyana anuvyakhyana tika vivarana tippani anuvada prativadakarana tarka sanstapana tattva nirdharana grantha prakashana all of the things are there you write a commentary write an anthology write elucidation explain critically edit it so all of these things are contributions contribution does not mean that uh, it must be original or to do something already done thing already accomplished thing properly maintained and distributed that is also a type of contribution for example yaneshwari is a very greatest contribution at least it is equal to the contribution of krishna himself in his bhagavad gita <laughs> it is not just a, a eulogy or a flattery i will just explain while i was explaining in the rigvidya brahmana sabha i explained one mantra हृदय तत् विजानीय विश्वस्यायतन महत् हृदय तत् विश्व आयतन महद आयतन ब्रूयते हियर दर् टू एक्सप्लेनेशन फस्ट इज गिवन हृदय दिस् हार्ट आर् दिस् दहराकाश दि सट्लर दट इज वाट इन सैंस यूज टू कलेक्ट एंडो कास्मिक रेटिकुलम दिस् इज एक्सो कास्मिक रेटिकुलम एंड दिस् एंडो कास्मिक रेटिकुलम दिस् आकाश इज महद आयतन इट इज अ ग्रेट टेपल so there are two meanings if this is a great temple these available temples are not great they are simple temples just elementary great temples this is the first meaning second meaning is instead of considering this as mahat and amahatara alpa considering it as mahat mahatara and mahatama there are three explanations 
if this hridaya the god residing here is mahadayatana if it is a great temple then god residing other temples that is mahatra ayatana god residing in the form of sons it is mahatma ayatana because of the purpose what is the purpose of god the purpose of god what is the purpose of your shop when you are opening a shop you must see that your commodities reach the society the more you reach the society you are benefited your purpose is to reach the society god's purpose is magnan uddharate lokan karunya shastra panina sakshan narayano deva kartha mayim tanu so this proves that the purpose of god his existence his activities either jagat vyapara or ashit vyapara cosmic governance or emancipative governance of god his existence his incarnations avatarana as well as delegations avatarana the purpose of these fourfold that is a quadrilateral act is nothing but for our upliftment when god resides in your heart how many of you knows that how many of you can grasp that god which is in your heart it is very difficult it is just like asking a person who is thirst and about to die to dig a well and drink water it is impossible heart residing god is accessible only to yogi dhyana avasthita tadgate na manasa pashyanti yam yoginah yogine eva drashtum arhanti tad dhira eva parijananti dhira eva parijananti moodah avajananti anye bhavah vividishanti iti shrutishu kathitam so purpose of god is multitude and multiple emancipation that does not happen in this temple when god constructed temples when he took the form of bimba in various temples thousands of people they were liberated so that is mahatra ayatana and even krishna he could not convert even darjuna who is the immediate student for krishna whereas people like ekanatha and ramanuja acharya and shanti gyaneshwara by either direct or indirect representation of the gita wisdom, they have made the minds of millions of people into transformation and subjection to divine surrender that's why i told that they are great at least equivalent to that uh, krishna's bhagavad gita and in the real sense to be humble krishna himself will accept that it is greater than that this is what we call contribution and writing vyakarana sutra nayi nayi rakshati to grinch karane these things are not contribution these things are additions i want to no no i want to just explain the difference between addition and contribution if you write 10 books you are adding to the literary treasury or wealth whatever you write unless it is going to create a transformation for example we are talking about uh, this uh, karpura manjari and this uh, kavya mimamsa how many of you know that how many of you know gyaneshwari have heard the name and know about the essence of it so lot of things are there that which is uh, totally devoid of the divine plan those things they have ephemeral pressure within the years and mind and eroded by the course of time that which is a uh, deep rooted abyssal core of your spirit that eternally resides rules and enthroned in the period of eternity and irascible even by dissolution of the whole world itself so this is what we have contribution you can write number of books you can submit number of papers these things are additions these things are contribution to the seminar the contribution of maharashtra to the sanskrit literature not only sanskrit literature to the vedic literature to the divine literature is contribution through the gaudinya rishi who belongs to the Vaid- sampradaya and contribution of gyaneshwari to gita like these people they are shila shashita bajra lepaita they are uneroded let us think their lotus feet and develop that sense of eternity to give real contribution not one more feather added to the crown by means of our mere additions let us develop the skill of kalpana imagination the skill of tulanatmaka distinguishability and comparative studies the skill of understanding the deep perceptibility parapenetrative vision these things are possible only by adhering ourselves to the divine lineage of wisdom and maharashtra is abundant with the divine lineage i think that those three what we call in our sampradaya vedic sampradaya rig yajisan sama there are three essential pillars of the divine lineage of maharashtra in the forms of eknath janeshwaran tukaram let us adhere to the divine lineage and develop divinity and glorify mahar not only in sanskrit literature in the global literature and global human civilization itself narayana <laughs> <laughs>